Hey guys, today we're back working on the 1911 Franklin cycle cart, working on some body panels. Let's stick around. Okay guys, so uh, to make the body panels, I took advantage of my where I work. We make EPS foam, we have a computer cutting machine. So I had some panels made, I drew them up and made these panels to uh, get the shape of the cowl section, the grill section, the inner part of the hood area. So I use those as templates basically, I'll show you how that works. So this is the inner part of the grill area. See that fits pretty much right in there. The Clecos are the way to kind of there, but that's basically what that, what that was used. I formed this around that. And I formed it around it using a little piece of aluminum. This is just two inch strip of aluminum I bent in half. And then I'm using my shrinker stretcher, actually the shrinker, to create the big bend and the stretcher to create the outflow of that or the, the con convex curve. So I've been doing a few other things. I did not videotape. I've got the wood deck down. I've got to use some tongue and groove foam or tongue and groove wood for that. And I made these little corner covers. Uh, the original car had these little covers around the outside edge. And this just goes on here like this, and this will get screwed down around like that. Just to protect, this will, be, this will be painted black and this is going to get finished a dark, dark brown. Um, so we're making good progress on this so far. I've already made this. I just wanted to kind of test it all out. So I've got an inner piece that creates the structure for the panel. You see the, where the shrinks are here. And then I just riveted that all together and it's right now it's held in place by Clecos. Uh, Clecos are super helpful little tools. This is a Cleco wrench. Pretty simple. Just be like that. Pulls it out. This is a lot faster than using nuts and screws and things like that. Anyway, for temporary fastening. So I've made the inner, I made this part. Next up, I'm going to make the front grill cover. For that one, I'm going to use a, a piece that's a little shorter on one side because the grill, if you look at it, has a very narrow face on it. It's a really narrow little strip around here. So if I make it with a big strip, then I have to cut a whole bunch of material off. So I'm just going to start with a small one and see how that goes. And I decided to anneal this a little bit. So I heated this up with a torch. And uh, I think that will work. Because when I was stretching it earlier, when I was shrinking it, it was fine. But when I stretched it, it was breaking. You see here, the, the, the aluminum is cutting. So it's just, just kind of tearing itself. So the shrinks are fine. It's the stretches that were tearing this aluminum. This is 5150 aluminum, 40,000 thick. So... Uh, I'll set the camera up on a tripod and I'll show you the shrinking, shrinking and stretching process. Hopefully this annealing helps it, helps it when I get down to this part. So let's keep on keeping on. Okay guys, so I marked every inch. I put a mark to help me keep track so I, I shrink it evenly. So I'm going to mark uh, shrink on every, every mark and I'll shrink in between each mark. As I kind of go around, I'll equally distance it. So I've got marks at 6 inches, 10 inches, and so on. Uh, I mark every inch out here. Um, so I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to work my way around and I'll use my template uh, on the table here to try to keep track of uh, how much I'm doing it and make sure it's going the right way without going too far. So uh, let's get it to shrinking. Let's see. Start at zero here. Just putting a shrink at every, every one inch. Right now, I'm just going to go up to six inches. Let's go to the other side. Okay, so that's a six inch mark. You see how much shape that's already got. And so, what I'll do is I'll look at the back side and I'll hold my template up to it. You can see I've got a little bit to go, so I'll go around through the half, the half marks next. So in between each of those little dashes. Okay, so I'm getting a little too much crown in the center, so I'm going to stretch that a little bit. Stretch it just a little bit. Here. Okay, that's 
a lot better. You can see in this here now, that fits a whole lot better. So I'm gonna go out past the six inch mark now and bring it all the way down the sides. down pretty good and we got to go the other direction to get down there There. So now my little wings have to be bent out, so I'm gonna work on that next. It's about three inches, so about 13 inches from center is where I'm gonna start the stretches. One, two, three, about the same spot right there, so they're consistent. So this this seemed to work pretty well because I was using this as a needle metal. Let's see how this works. Let's see the little small bumps. I got the marks again, so I'm gonna use the marks as my guide. started to move it. Awesome. That annealing it really helps. It's not tearing it. The other one tore. So that's that's a good lesson to learn. Of course being a little shorter too. It's got less material to work to a stretch. looking pretty good so I'm going to what I'm gonna to have to do I think to get this in here I'm going to shrink a little bit more here to get this to kick in a little higher maybe I need a little more stretch on there and that'll take care of that let me try that I think that's looking pretty good I'm gonna fine-tune that a little bit more but you get the idea of what we're doing here we'll make a piece for the bottom as well but that's uh, Okay, so I've got it uh, mocked up on the car. I trimmed off the edge and just bent it down using a crescent wrench. I, I kind of cut the little corner and then bent this down. This will give me an attachment point under here with a couple rivets for later. Um, also, the face of this is gonna come down a little bit lower than the foam. It's gonna kind of come over here and swoop down. Uh, sorry, swoop down here so that's a little bit more uh, like the original car. So that's looking pretty good. So this is gonna get a thin piece of aluminum all the way around it. A nice big circle in the center uh, to replicate this right here. So that's the shape we're looking for. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the grill yet, but uh, anyway, we're just trying to get the out, outside shape of it done. Uh, when I said I uh, annealed the aluminum, I just took this torch right here, set the aluminum down on top of my some jack stands, and I put some uh, marks of Sharpie marker on there. The Sharpie marker burns off, and you'll see the metal start to move a little bit. That means you got it hot enough, and that's, an, that's annealed. I don't really know any other way to do that other than uh, you're really kind of guessing because you keep, doesn't say, hey, I'm annealed now. <laughs> uh, you just have to kind of work until, until you try it, until see if it works. If it doesn't work, try it again. Um, anyway, so this is coming along pretty good. Uh, my next step will be to make the face of this so that you don't have all these little jagged edges everywhere. Uh, and what this will do, it will provide an edge for the, the radiator surround, which will be a little thin strip here. The face of the radiator with the grill, right? This foam won't stay here. And then this, this edge here will also give me a space for the hood to sit on top of, right? To go across. So the hood's going to rest on here, across to that piece. That's why that piece is there. This gives it some place for the hood to... One side is going to get riveted in place. The other side will have a hinge to open and close. You can maintenance the, um, 
the brakes and all that sort of stuff. Any hoot, uh, that is where we are right now. So uh, making some great progress on this build. Okay, so I use the templates uh, to draw out the drawing shape on the aluminum sheet. And uh, this was one of the original pieces that had a slightly different shape, it was a little taller, but I wanted a perfectly round circle. So I changed the design of it a little bit. So that what this is a combination, perfectly round circle. And then I added this little bell part at the bottom here. So I use that at the bottom down here to get that bottom shape make it look like the uh, inspiration car. So uh, time to get cutting. So I'm using my electric shears to uh, cut away most of the material and I'll use the uh, hand trimmers to get the rest of it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Just gonna straighten the edges up a little bit. They got a little deformed under the with the snips and deburr all that. Okay, so up next is uh, drilling the rivet holes. I got a piece of plywood to protect my workbench here, but I marked the center over three inches all the way down, uh, three inch separation. I marked a half inch in. That's how wide this flange is. So a quarter inch from the edge where the rivets are gonna go. I cleaned this up um, using a deburring tool and a file, just to get this edge nice and smooth, as, as smooth as you can get it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drill these holes and then we'll transfer these holes onto the other part and uh, get this thing assembled. Okay, so I'm super happy with the progress I've got here so far. So I've got the uh, front grill cowl on here. I'm gonna have to cut the hole out for the actual radiator, the, the vent here, I guess you call it. Um, not actually radiator on this car, this is an air-cooled car. So no air, so just air cooling, no radiator actually. Uh, this little bit is done, I just gotta drill some more holes here. This cowl is done. It's already riveted and ready to go. Uh, man, this is coming together. So I think what I'm going to do next I probably need to work on the seat. The seat will be on our next video. So I think I'm gonna call that the end of this video of the bodybuilding of the Franklin part one. Uh, I think we made some pretty good progress. Just in, This is just one day's work or not even a day yet. This goes pretty quick. Uh, I do recommend a kneeling to do the stretching, the shrinking. Uh, not a problem, but the stretching seems to tear. So I might remake that piece, all those tears. Although nobody's ever gonna see it, it's inside the body. Um, and I can just rivet, rivet the bejesus out of that. It won't make a bit of difference. So yeah, maybe I will, I don't know, I haven't decided yet. But uh, so the tools you're gonna need for this, if you have a sheet metal shear, that's helpful. You're gonna need a yardstick stick of some sort. You're gonna need some uh, hand tools, uh, right and a left hand uh, sheet metal trimmers. You need a file to cut off all the edges. The, rip, the uh, Clico is nice, but these little um, tech screws work too. I use these a lot. Um, sometimes I use those instead of rivets uh, on areas where I want to remove them. And a deburring tool is super helpful. This helps you uh, clean up all the edges if you don't have sharp edges on your aluminum. And uh, yeah, guys, hey, thanks for watching these videos. I really appreciate it. Uh, your likes and your subscriptions and your comments always help the channel. And um, check out our Etsy page. And then also the Amazon page. We've got all the parts we're using on these or almost everything, either from Renegade or from Amazon. So uh, Amazon's doing a good job of supplying go-kart parts, which is kind of fun. So uh, get out in the garage and build something cool.